Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. There are numerous applications of waxes in dentistry. Each of these applications may require unique physical properties from the particular wax used. I will show examples of several of the waxes used in dentistry, the particular application of these waxes, and in some cases, the final product that results from the use of these waxes. There are three major types of waxes that are used in dentistry. These are the processing waxes, the impression waxes, and the pattern waxes. The processing waxes consist of three types. The boxing wax, the utility wax, and sticky wax. Boxing wax is usually supplied in the form of strips and rope. Boxing wax is a very pliable wax which means that it need not be melted prior to its application. And it's important that it be pliable at room temperature. In addition, boxing wax has a slight amount of tackiness. The application of boxing wax is found in complete dentures where the boxing wax may be used to aid in making a final cast from an impression. In this case, we have a zinc oxide eugenol final impression from which we would like to make a master cast. Around the edges of the impression, we have applied the rope wax. and this has been sealed to the zinc oxide eugenol impression. Then to build up height on our, on our master cast, we have used the strip wax to encompass the zinc oxide eugenol impression. Once this has been done, uh, a dental stone can be poured in this area, and the end product is a master cast, which has two uh, properties that have resulted from the use of the boxing wax. The first is the nice sharp edge that surrounds the master cast. And finally, the edges are uniform and require a minimal amount of trimming with the use of a model trimmer. The second example of waxes in the processing category are the dental utility waxes. Dental utility waxes come in a number of shapes and forms, but one of the most common is that known as periphery wax. Like boxing wax, the utility waxes are soft and pliable at room temperature which means they need not be melted prior to application. The major difference between the utility wax rope and the boxing wax rope, which was shown previously, is the fact that the utility wax will adhere to itself. This property is not available with the, uh, the boxing wax rope. This enables the utility wax to be built up upon itself without being melted, but merely by using finger pressure on the wax. An example of an application of the periphery wax, or utility wax, is found in the building up of a tray 
to be used with an alginate impression. In this case, the periphery wax adheres to itself and also to the metal tray. A third application of the processing waxes is the dental sticky wax. Dental sticky wax has two unique properties. At room temperature, the wax is brittle, whereas at higher temperatures, the wax is molten and possesses a sticky quality. We'll heat a wax spatula in an alcohol flame and demonstrate this property. As this wax cools, we'll try and show its sticky nature. One application of sticky wax is in the repairing of a broken denture. The two pieces are stuck together using the sticky wax and then placed in the investment. The unique property of sticky wax in its brittleness prevents the two pieces of the denture from coming apart. Should they deform, the wax will break rather than flowing. The impression waxes are the second type of wax used in dentistry. These waxes have the unique property of being hard at room temperature and will flow in the mouth at mouth temperature. This is a corrective impression wax, which has the property of being hard at room temperature, but will flow at mouth temperature. Its application is in forming a posterior peripheral seal on a final impression in complete dentures. In this case, we have a zinc oxide eugenol final impression. And in order to facilitate the making of a posterior palatal seal, we have flowed the wax onto the posterior part of this impression. So this wax is used initially in its molten condition when it is applied to the impression. Once this has solidified, the dentist places this impression back into the mouth, and the temperature of the mouth and the slight pressure that holds the impression in place will cause the wax to flow and uh, duplicate the contours of the tissue. The pattern waxes are the third major type of waxes used in dentistry. There are three major examples of pattern waxes, which include the inlay waxes, the casting waxes, and the base plate waxes. The inlay waxes are used most frequently in operative dentistry and in crown and bridge, and generally consist of two types of waxes. A type one wax, which is used for preparing a wax pattern in the mouth, and a type two wax, which is used for preparing a pattern on a die. This particular wax is a type two wax, which is used for preparing a pattern on a die. In this case, we have a full or a three-quarter crown, which has been waxed on an ivorine tooth. The inlay waxes have three unique properties which separate them from other waxes. The first property is that these waxes must have a certain limit on the flow at either mouth temperature or a few degrees above room temperature. In the case of the wax that is used in the mouth, the wax must have no more than 1% flow at 37 degrees C, or mouth temperature. This is to avoid distortion when the wax is removed from the mouth. A second unique characteristic of the inlay waxes is the control on their thermal expansion. These waxes particularly those used in the mouth, must have a unique 
value of thermal expansion that can be controlled such that when the wax solidifies and cools to room temperature, the uh, contraction is known and can be compensated for by an investment procedure. The third property is that once these waxes are invested and eliminated from the mold cavity, the residue left by the wax must be minimal. So then we have three unique characteristics of the inlay waxes. The amount of residue left in the mold cavity when the wax is burned out, the flow of the wax at mouth temperature, or in the case of the indirect wax, at a few degrees above room temperature, and finally, the thermal expansion of the wax that is used in the mouth. Once an inlay is formed, as in this example, the uh, wax pattern can have a sprue attached to it. And then this sprue may be placed in a sprue former prior to investing. In this case, this pattern was made on a die. The final product is the gold casting, which has an identical shape to the wax pattern and the rubber sprue former. A, sep a second example of the pattern waxes are the casting waxes. These waxes come as sheets or uh, specific shapes, which are used most frequently in partial dentures. This particular shape is a clasp. As you can see, it's much more convenient to use one of these than to form one from a stick of wax. A second type might be a retention mesh which is used to hold acrylic in the end product. A third type is a palatal bar with a retention mesh. The application of these waxes is on the final investment master cast of the partial denture. In this case, we can see the sheet wax, which is a 28 gauge green wax. In this area, we can see the retention mesh, which is a specific shape. And in this area, we can see the clasp and the palatal bar with the retention mesh. The end product which is cast in chrome cobalt in this case, again shows these features of the wax, the retention mesh, the clasp, and the palatal bar with its retention mesh. The third type of pattern wax is the base plate wax. There are three types of base plate wax a type 1 wax, which is a soft wax and used for building contours. A type 2 wax, which is a uh, normal climate wax, which is used for impressions or for uh, plates that are being placed in the mouth. And the third type is a uh, hot climate type of wax, which flows at higher temperatures, which can be used in tropical areas. These waxes come in sheets and are not extremely flexible at room temperature and must be uh, melted to be used in their application. This is a stabilized base plate made of shellac over which the base plate wax has been applied. Into the wax are set the porcelain teeth of the denture, and it is from this that the final end product is made from acrylic. 
So as you can see, the contours and the smoothness of this wax are very important because they are transferred to the final acrylic denture. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.